In 1901, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen for his groundbreaking discovery of X-rays in 1895, a discovery that was somewhat accidental in nature. While conducting experiments with cathode rays, Röntgen observed a fluorescent glow of crystals on a table near his tube, marking the first indication of X-rays. This initial observation, though accidental, sparked his curiosity. Röntgen systematically investigated this phenomenon, leading to his detailed study of X-rays. His discovery was the result of careful attention during an experiment designed for another purpose. The key to Röntgen's groundbreaking discovery was his alertness to an unexpected phenomenon during his experiments. His attention to the unusual fluorescent glow which was not related to his initial experimental goals, and his subsequent thorough exploration of this observation, exemplify the role of serendipity combined with systematic scientific inquiry in major scientific breakthroughs. In 1902, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded jointly to Hendrik Lorentz and Peter Zeeman for their extraordinary research and discovery of the Zeeman effect. This effect, named after Peter Zeeman, is a phenomenon in which spectral lines are split into several components in the presence of a static magnetic field. This discovery was crucial as it provided experimental confirmation for Lorentz's theoretical predictions about the influence of magnetism on light waves. Hendrik Lorentz, a Dutch physicist, had developed a theory that explained the influence of magnetism on light, predicting that magnetic fields would have an effect on the oscillations of light waves. Peter Zeeman, also from the Netherlands, conducted experiments that demonstrated this effect. In 1896, Zeeman discovered that, when light emitted from a source was placed in a magnetic field, the spectral lines of the light would split into multiple components, a phenomenon that was in line with Lorentz's theoretical predictions. The significance of the Zeeman effect lies in its confirmation of the electromagnetic theory of light and its profound implications for the understanding of atomic structure. It provided a powerful tool for studying the atomic and molecular structure of materials, which later played a crucial role in the development of quantum mechanics and the modern understanding of atomic physics. The collaboration between Lorentz's theoretical work and Zeeman's experimental findings exemplifies the synergy between theory and experiment in advancing scientific knowledge. In 1903, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Antoine-Henri Becquerel, Pierre Curie, and Marie Curie, for their groundbreaking work in the field of radioactivity. This year's prize was divided, with one half awarded to Becquerel for his discovery of spontaneous radioactivity, and the other half jointly to Pierre and Marie Curie for their research on the radiation phenomena discovered by Becquerel. Henri Becquerel, a French physicist, was honored for his discovery of natural radioactivity in 1896. His discovery occurred when he accidentally found that uranium salts emitted rays that could penetrate through solid objects, fog photographic plates, and ionize air. This was a pivotal moment in the understanding of atomic structure and laid the foundation for the field of nuclear physics. Pierre and Marie Curie's contribution was equally significant. They conducted extensive research on radioactive substances, notably discovering two new elements, polonium and radium, which exhibited much stronger radioactive properties than uranium. Their work not only furthered the understanding of radioactivity, but also introduced techniques for isolating radioactive isotopes. Marie Curie's efforts were particularly notable, as she was the first woman to receive a Nobel Prize, and her work paved the way for the use of radioactivity in medicine. The 1903 Nobel Prize in Physics thus recognized the combined efforts of these scientists in unveiling the mysterious properties of radioactivity, marking a monumental step in the field of atomic and nuclear physics. Their discoveries opened up new avenues for scientific exploration, leading to significant advancements in both theoretical and applied physics. In 1904, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Lord Rayleigh, whose full name is John William Strutt, third Baron Rayleigh. He received this prestigious award for his investigations of the densities of the most important gases and for his discovery of argon in connection with these studies. Lord Rayleigh's work in the late 19th century was instrumental in advancing the understanding of the composition of the Earth's atmosphere. His meticulous research and experiments on the densities of gases led to a significant discovery. He noticed discrepancies in the density of nitrogen gas obtained from different sources. Nitrogen extracted from the air was denser than nitrogen derived from chemical compounds. This observation led him to suspect that another component was present in atmospheric nitrogen. 
Collaborating with William Ramsey, Rayleigh conducted further experiments which led to the identification and isolation of a new inert gas, which they named argon. This discovery was groundbreaking, as it challenged the then accepted notion of the immutability of the elements and added a new element to the periodic table. It also paved the way for the discovery of other noble gases and significantly contributed to the development of the field of atomic physics. In 1905, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Philip Edward Anton von Lennard for his work on cathode rays, specifically for his researches on the cathode rays. Leonard's scientific contributions were pivotal in the field of experimental physics, particularly in the study of the fundamental properties of cathode rays, which are streams of electrons emitted from the cathode in a vacuum tube. Leonard's experiments were focused on understanding the nature of cathode rays, their interactions with matter, and their physical properties. One of his key achievements was the development of the Leonard window, a thin aluminum foil that allowed cathode rays to pass from the vacuum of the tube into the external air, enabling detailed study of their properties outside the confines of the tube. This innovation was crucial in demonstrating that cathode rays could exist in the form of free electrons outside of a vacuum tube, a concept that was not widely accepted at the time. Through his meticulous experiments, Leonard determined several important characteristics of cathode rays. He measured their range in air and their absorption by various materials, providing evidence that they were composed of particles rather than waves. He also studied the effects of magnetic and electric fields on cathode rays, contributing to the understanding of their particle-like behavior. In 1906, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Sir Joseph John Thomson for his theoretical and experimental investigations of the conduction of electricity by gases. J.J. Thomson's work was pivotal in the field of atomic physics, particularly for his discovery of the electron in 1897. Thomson's experiments with cathode rays led him to propose that these rays were composed of previously unknown negatively charged particles, which he called corpuscles, and are now known as electrons. This discovery was groundbreaking because it challenged the then-prevailing theory that atoms were indivisible and laid the foundation for the modern understanding of atomic structure. Using a cathode ray tube, Thomson demonstrated that cathode rays were deflected by electric and magnetic fields, which suggested they were composed of particles rather than waves. By measuring the degree of deflection of these rays in magnetic and electric fields, he was able to calculate the mass-to-charge ratio of these particles. His findings indicated that these particles were much lighter than hydrogen, the lightest atom known at the time, and thus must be smaller than atoms. Thomson's discovery led to the development of the plum pudding model of the atom, in which electrons were thought to be embedded within a positively charged pudding. While this model was later replaced by the nuclear model of the atom, Thomson's work was crucial in shifting scientific understanding from the concept of the atom as an indivisible particle to a complex structure containing subatomic particles. In 1907, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Albert A. Michelson, an American physicist, for his precision optical instruments and the spectroscopic and metrological investigations carried out with their aid. Michelson is perhaps most famous for the Michelson-Morley experiment, which he conducted with Edward Morley in 1887. This experiment was designed to detect the relative motion of the Earth through the hypothesized luminiferous ether, a medium then thought to be necessary for the propagation of light waves. The Michelson-Morley experiment used an interferometer, an instrument that Michelson had significantly improved, to measure the speed of light in different directions. Contrary to the expectations of the time, the experiment found no significant difference in the speed of light in different directions, suggesting that the luminiferous ether did not exist. The results of the Michelson-Morley experiment had profound implications for physics, leading ultimately to the development of Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity. Michelson's work in improving the accuracy and precision of optical instruments, particularly the interferometer, was groundbreaking. His contributions to spectroscopy and metrology were also significant, enhancing the precision of measurements in these fields. Michelson's Nobel Prize in 1907 was a recognition of his meticulous work in the field of optics and his role in one of the most important experiments in the history of physics. In 1908, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Gabriel Lippmann for his
9. The Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded jointly to Guglielmo Marconi and Carl Ferdinand Braun for their contributions to the development of wireless telegraphy. This award recognized their significant advancements in the field of radio communication which had a profound impact on global communication. Guglielmo Marconi, an Italian inventor, is often credited with the invention of the radio. He was a pioneer in the field of wireless communication, having successfully demonstrated the first practical system for transmitting and receiving radio signals over long distances. Marconi's work involved the development of a complete system of wireless telegraphy, which included transmitters, receivers, and antennas. His most notable achievement was the first successful transatlantic wireless telegraphy transmission in 1901, which bridged communication between Europe and North America. Carl Ferdinand Braun, a German physicist, contributed significantly to the development of radio technology through his work on wireless telegraphy and radio circuits. Braun invented the crystal detector, one of the first semiconductor devices and a crucial component in early radio receivers. He also developed the Braun tube, an early type of cathode ray oscilloscope, and made improvements to antenna design and transmission efficiency. His work in enhancing the performance of wireless circuits and reducing interference played a vital role in advancing the field of radio communication. In 1910, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Johannes Diederich van der Waals for his work on the equation of state for gases and liquids. His groundbreaking research significantly advanced the understanding of the physical properties of gases and liquids, making a crucial contribution to the field of thermodynamics. Van der Waals is renowned for developing a new equation that improved upon the ideal gas law by accounting for the volume occupied by gas molecules and the attraction between them. This was a significant advancement because the ideal gas law, while useful under certain conditions, did not accurately describe the behavior of gases at high pressures and low temperatures. His work provided a much more accurate description of the behavior of real gases compared to the ideal gas model. By considering the size of molecules and the intermolecular forces, van der Waals was able to explain why gases liquefy at high pressures and low temperatures and why their behavior deviates from the ideal model under these conditions. The impact of van der Waals' research extended far beyond the specific area of gas laws. His work laid the foundation for further research in molecular physics, contributing significantly to the development of statistical mechanics and thermodynamics.